All right, good morning. Uh, still working on this series of things, trying to help folks to get started with their, with their longbows and recurves and stuff like that. Um, I've already split out a couple of videos. One of them uh, was about uh, the, your bow weight and draw weight and trying to trying to find a bow that, that uh, you can shoot and, uh, and do your best with. I uh, talked about in another video, I talked about a very basic and and but up but a good way to get started with your arrow tuning, um, kind of help that situation. Um, now again, with each one of these things that we're talking about, like your bow and your arrows and your you know your point weights and so on and so forth, that there's you, you could have a, a, a thousand conversations about each one of these things I'm talking about. Uh, there's, there's a lot of different ways of doing things and a lot of different uh, materials to use and so on and so forth. I mean, you, uh, I'm, just, I'm just trying to get some the basic stuff out there. So I'm just trying to preface what I'm, my, my videos here. And again, this is a <coughs> part of the series. Uh, oh, this is uh, HEB sparkling water. Uh, pretty good stuff don't have any calories and it's better than just drinking regular water and it's better for you than drinking a soda pop so anyway uh, kind of refreshing I've been out cutting a little firewood and burning a little brush so I decided I'd take a break and while I was doing that I was thinking about this uh, along with tuning your arrows and your bow weight uh, need to talk about I'm going to try to combine this a little bit I may split this up in another video and talk about it a little more in detail but uh, for the purposes of this video, uh, I'm going to talk about brace height and your bowstring. Uh, just to kind of throw it together. Uh, the first video, as far as as far as brace height is concerned, the first video I made, I, I made, I said something in there about every all these bowyers have an estimate or a, a a range that they recommend where you start or keep your brace height in between. And I, what I said was uh, all bowyers recommend six and a you know six and a half to six and three quarter inches or something like that I, I gotta correct that all bowyers and bow manufacturers and stuff like that all have their own recommendations for their own bows okay one bowyer may say it rec they recommend six and a half to seven and a half and then the next bowyer may recommend six and three quarters to seven and three quarters or something like that you're just going to have to, uh, if you buy a, a, a production, like a bear or something like that, a bear recurve or whatever, I'm certain that in your uh, owner's manual or, or even online, you, it, it would tell you what they recommend uh, for your brace height. Uh, what kind of spurred me on to say this is I remember a conversation I was having with somebody on the phone here not too long. It was Steve Teray with Northern Mist. Uh, Longbows, and he and he said something that was hilarious to me, and and it makes all but it's it's so simple, but it's very very true. Now uh, he said that uh, he was talking to a guy, and this just popped out of his mouth. He said, "I was a much better shooter when I didn't know so much." <laughs> and if you think about it, if you've been doing this for any length of time, that makes a lot of sense. Um. You know, back in the back in the days, you know, early '80s and late '70s, early '80s, or whatever, there was no internet. We didn't have anything like that. So, if you bought a secondhand bow from somebody or whatever, I, you may or may not get whatever paperwork or whatever came with it. So, what you did, whether it was a recurve or longbow or whatever, you went out there in the yard or wherever it is you shoot, and you start shooting your bow. And a lot of guys, a lot of guys, including me, would take our finger and put it on the back of the bow. I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Take our, take our finger or our hand and make a fist, and and measure to the string with our thumb, and that's where we, that's where we started. Okay. Uh, if it didn't shoot right, or if something didn't, wasn't feeling right, or whatever, you twist that string up a little bit, raise that brace height up a little bit, until it got to where it felt like it was shooting right. And that's what you did. 
and it, it didn't matter what the actual if it was six and three eighths inches or seven and a quarter inches it didn't matter about any of that it's just where the bow shot best okay and it's really if you think about it it's really just that simple okay your brace height is in is in my opinion is in direct proportion of your draw length and the type bow that you're shooting okay uh these uh hill style bows you know a, 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 the the lower the lower the brace height okay you're you're actually using more of the power stroke of the bow when it's trying to return to brace all right now someone with a, a 25 and a half or 26 inch draw length could get away with a five inch brace height okay and they're going to use a lot more of that that power stroke versus you know having a seven and a half inch brace height or something Somebody with a longer draw length, 29, 30 inches or whatever, may have to raise that brace height a little bit just to, you know, you, the bow still being very efficient because your power stroke is longer, but you're, you're, uh, you're, you're, you're not having, you're, if, one of the things that, that's a, that alarms people and it hurts is whenever they shoot this bow, uh, the quickest, you know, they, it slaps their arm right here. You know, the string does when they shoot, okay? And I can, a little bit of sarcasm here, but the quickest way you can learn not to be slapping your arm like that is to slap your arm one time. And you'll start figuring out pretty quick, okay, something's wrong here. Brace height's too low, or I'm torquing, the, I'm torquing this bow like this when I'm, when I'm shooting it or whatever. Something's wrong. Uh, you, you know, and he, you you may shoot a million arrows, and then all of a sudden one day you're sitting there and you forget, you know, just for whatever reason, you pull back and you shoot, and that son of a gun might still pop your arm. Okay, you gotta <coughs> you gotta consider uh, something like hitting your arm or whatever. That's re people wear bracers. I wear a bracer mostly just to keep my clothes out of the way when I'm shooting because I, I, I tend to not bend my elbow as much as some people so my arms are a little straighter and you know there's very little tolerance there now uh, if i can slap myself even right now <laughs> i can do it um, so anyway brace height you want to get all of that everything out of this bow that you can all right brace height can also affect your arrow tuning and everything else so You've got to kind of tackle these things one at a time, but keep in mind that if you change your brace height after you've gotten your arrows tuned, that you may have to kind of redo that process again. You know, if that if you change your brace height, you know, drastically. Uh, these uh, long uh, these long bows or heel style bows or whatever, generally speaking, their brace height recommended brace height is pretty low. Uh, compared to other bows. But the recommendation, so just for instance, say the recommendation is between six and a quarter and, and six and three quarters. That's what their recommendation is, all right? You get your bow and your draw length is 29 and a half inches. Six and three quarters, the top end of that brace height is, is not set in stone. You, you may have to go to six and seven eighths or seven inches okay to, to for it to shoot properly for you now you certainly don't want to go something way outside like nine inches or something like that because you're you're you know again with the diminishing return thing uh, you're starting to take away from the performance of the bow and so on and so forth now recurve basically is the same thing uh you know we can talk about recurves in, in some other video but i'm just not right now these long bows uh Brace height is very, very important. Uh, it's very, very important to maintain that brace height in order to help maintain consistency in your shooting. Uh, you put a new string on there, and I'm, let's just talk about bow strings. Uh, you, you put a new string on there, uh, you get it all set up, and you go in there with your bow square, and you do all everything. I, I generally, I mean, I have a bow square, and I use it from time to time, but generally what I do is I put an arrow on there, and if it looks right to me, I just tie on a knock point right there and start right there, right? 
I can take you down an adjustable knock point uh, with, with some serving material and you can move that thing up and down as you need. You know, you shoot an arrow, you'll pretty well know uh, if you need to move your brace height very much or not. I mean, uh, your uh, knock point. So, strings. Uh, I don't know why it's such a big deal with people. Um, you know, for, for years and years and years, and I don't have any way of knowing how many animals were killed or, or how many tens of millions, hundreds of millions of arrows were shot with B-50 Dactron strings, you know. Uh, uh, you know, flip, Flemish twist strings, with, you know, with 14, 16, sometimes, you know, bigger, heavier bows, 18 strands of, of B-50. Uh, and there are people today and I, and I talk to people all the time. I've got B-50 strings on some of my bows. Uh, the, 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 the B-50 was, uh, at the time, was pretty revolutionary. Uh, you know, if you go talk to some old boy 500 years ago sitting around a campfire at night twisting up grass or horse hair or something, making a bow string out of it, com that compared to B-50 is light years apart, you know, as far as uh, innovation and, and everything else. Uh, I saw uh, uh, some guy, somebody, asked, somebody on one of the forums was asking questions. He wanted to build a string, or he was trying to uh, buy a string or something. I can't remember. But uh, you know, he asked a legitimate question: Hey, should I try to buy a B50, or should I try to buy uh, a fast flight type material, low stretch material string? Where should I start at? Well, there was some individual on there said uh, I wouldn't. Ha B-50 strings are junk, and I wouldn't use it for shoelaces. It's just trash. You know, the, every bow I've ever put it on just shot like hell. Well, obviously this person had a bad experience with the string, that string material. I will say uh, there's, a, there's a possibility if he was building the strings themselves or whoever was building the strings for him, uh, they either were overbuilding these strings, meaning putting too many strands in it and making it too heavy for whatever his draw weight was, and it feels like a big rope in his hand when he shoots it, compared to some of these other strings. Uh, if you're, if you're, uh, you get used to shooting, uh, say, Dynaflight 97 string, and then you go put a B-50 string on there, there is going to be a different feel to it. Uh, Performance-wise, all things being equal, the same string maker made a string out of B50 and a string out of uh, D97. You know, there's big debates about how much more performance you get out of a D97 versus. Uh, some people say it's just a few, you know, five feet a second. Some people say it's 15 feet a second. Whatever. But I would challenge you to, uh, you know, if it's it just say an average of 10 feet a second faster, if it is even that much, I would challenge you to stand over chronograph and shoot your bow. And, uh, you know, shoot 10 arrows, uh, you might have a two or three t duplicates in there. Uh, and then the sun get in your eyes or the wind change or whatever. And you may have one that's 10 feet different with either one of the bow strings. So uh, a properly built bow string, if you're using B50 or whatever it is you're using, uh, with your brace height and all those combinations, and you know, you're know you gonna optimize the performance of that bow no matter what you use. So, so needless to say, B B50 uh, bow string, I don't, B50 is uh, something that Brownell used to put out. I don't think Brownell's completely out of business. I just know that they're not making uh, the B50 string material anymore. Now there's somebody else that's making like a B55, okay? Supposed to be a little bit stronger or something. I don't know, probably. Very close to B50. I've got B50, B55, D97. I've got a whole bunch of different kinds of string material because I build my own strings and I tinker with that kind of stuff. Uh, the 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 low stretch materials. Everybody says fast flight. Okay, fast flight was a string material that it, on its own, and it's almost like you know people say, well let's stop and get a coke, and that person walk right in there and buy a sprite. You know you use coke as the Kind of the, or people just say a soda, uh, or whatever. Um, it's, it's kind of the same thing, you know. It's kind of semantics, but uh, people say I'm using fast flight. Well, they may not be using fast flight. They may be using D97 and just calling it flat fast flight. So that's some people get confused about that. Uh, and there's other string materials out there too. I mean, a, a lot of them. 
I have B50, B55, and D97, and I use combinations of all of those, uh, and that's plenty for me to get involved in. <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't want to try, I don't need to try any of this other stuff. I got enough material to last me the rest of my life building bow string. But uh, now, a Flemish twist string can be built a couple of different ways. Uh, uh, what you can make a two ply or a three ply. Um, the three ply, if it's done right, uh, the the taper ends. I'll show you what I'm talking about. What I mean by the taper, or or where you feather the the the, the twist out at, starting here, and then uh, and it stops right here. This is where your loop is, where you make your loop when you're building the string. Tends to be a little more round, and and it looks uniform. Okay, with a three ply. Uh, this is a two ply string, and if it's done correctly. You know, when you get all the back twists, you know, get all the twists out of it and put back twists in it when you put it together, it comes out very round and smooth. Uh, if it's not built, um, a less quality string will be more like a rope uh, it, 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 when you twist it up. You, you know what I'm saying? It, it'll be uh, it'll be like this instead of laying flat and round. It'll be uh, it'll it'll look literally like a rope. Um, Serving materials, there's a bunch of different ones. Uh, obviously, you're using it on, on uh, uh, the low stretch materials, you're using less strands, so this string is, is quite a bit skinnier uh, or thinner than, uh, say, say B55 or B50. So, in order for your knock to, to fit properly, you're going to use a little bit heavier uh, or a little bit thicker serving material. These, there's a bunch of, there's videos out there how to build uh, Flemish strings. Uh, unless you are extremely, extremely crafty and you watch two or three videos online how to do this and you sit down, your first bowstring probably not going to come out perfect. Okay? It takes some time, it takes a little bit of a feel to, to learn how to do it, you know, and, and uh, make it come out right, the, the correct length, and, and you know, and so on and so forth. So, don't get discouraged about that. If you want to build your own strings, buy you some black and, uh, you know, one spool of black and a spool of white, and sit down and uh, watch some videos and pause them, and, you know, just do that little portion right there and stop, and then go, you know, keep going until you get a string built. Uh, it may end up being a little bit too long for your bow, or maybe end up being too short for your bow, whatever. Uh, and you know, and, and it's always a good idea too when you're if you're building your own strings is to make notes. You know, make little notes. Okay, I, you know, I, for my top loop, I needed seven and a half inches from my fingertips to the tips of the feather, uh, the tips of the uh, where it fed, you know the, the end of the strands uh, for this to come out for this bow. You know, make little notes to yourself and so you keep that so when you're building another one, uh, it'll work out for you. Brace height's very important. It's also not that hard. You can make it as hard as you want to, but it's not that hard. Get your brace height right. Use the, the bowyers or the manufacturer or whoever. Use their recommended uh, uh, starting points, the, the low and the high. Stay in between that somewhere and work, kind of work within that range. Uh, don't get extreme extremely out of that range, whether it's higher or lower, meaning the string is further away from the handle or the deepest part of the handle, or, or lower meaning closer to the, the string to the you know, deepest part of the handle. Don't go, don't go to extremes. <coughs> you're you're going to be, you know, you're going to be fighting it then. Just kind of stay in that recommended area. Your bow string, that's a personal decision. Uh, you know, you, you do what you want to with that. Uh, I have a barrel full of long bows and recurves and stuff like that and some of them have b50 on them some of them have b55 some of them have dyna flight 97 that's been padded with b50 or it's been padded with b55 you know the loops are padded uh you know you 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 kind of tinker with that and you figure out what feels right for you and you do, and that's what you use just once you settle on something at least in the very beginning uh, once you settle on something, stick with that. If you if you start jumping back and forth, then you start ending up lost, kind of lost in the weeds with why your bow's not shooting like you want it to or whatever. 
Uh, I'll uh, I'll I'll continue some videos uh, a little more in depth uh, if if somebody wants to see how how I build my strings. Uh, that I'll try to figure out how to not video the entire process because that would be way too long and way too boring. But I'll try to hit the high spots of you know how I start, how I start my top loop, what I do in between, and how I start my bottom loop, and then finish the string or whatever. I'll, I'll try to do something like that. I'm not sure if I I don't have any I don't I don't really have any fancy editing software, so I don't know what exactly how to do that. But I'll try to figure that uh, if somebody wants to see it. Again, try to apply some of these uh, basic things to your, you know, your bow and your bow weight and your arrow tuning, like I talked about, and uh, don't get too wrapped up in, in uh, background noise about from people about which bow string is the best in the world, uh, because they'll all work uh, if the string is built properly. They'll all work and they'll all work just fine, and you can certainly go out and and hunt and shoot or whatever and, and have a good time with whatever string material so anyway thank you for watching this and uh i'll i'll try to find i'll try to put together some more content uh you know i'll try to do this maybe once a week or something like that i don't know if people are interested if, if i don't people are not interested then i'll just kind of keep my my opinions to myself <laughs> but thank you for watching and we'll see see you on the next one